Screen Directors Playhouse stars Paul Douglas, Edmund O'Brien, production The Big Lift, director George Seaton. <laughs> This is the Screen Director's Playhouse, the Thursday night feature on NBC's all-star festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. The makers of Anison for fast relief from the pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia, and by your local Buick dealer, who introduces the new 1951 Buick this coming Saturday, January 20th. Don't miss seeing the new 51 Buick. Tonight, the Screen Director's Playhouse is pleased to present Edmund O'Brien and Paul Douglas, starring in the first radio performance of the celebrated motion picture story, The Big Lift. But before we begin our adaptation, here's a word from RCA Victor. Inch for Inch, your best buy in television is RCA Victor 19-inch. Yes, a great many American families have taken this advice and bought the thrilling RCA Victor 19-inch console, truly the most exciting buy in television. When you set out to become an RCA Victor million-proof television set owner, remember that the set you choose will be the very hub of your home for years to come. So select the model you really want most, and chances are that model will be the kingly RCA Victor 19-inch console, inch for inch your best buy in television. Your 19-inch set will give you, in a great big way, all the matchless, million-proof qualities of sight and sound possible only to the world leader in electronics. Yes, inch for inch, your best buy in television is indeed RCA Victor 19-inch. And with it go wishes to you and your family for all the warmth and good cheer of million-proof television by RCA Victor. Now for the first act of the Screen Director's Playhouse presentation of The Big Lift, starring Paul Douglas as Hank and Edmund O'Brien as Danny. All right, men, all right, can the chatter. 19th Troop Carrier Squadron is bound for a new job in Berlin. Have you read the papers? You know what it's all about. Blockade. Now, here's Berlin inside the Russian zone of Germany. The Russians have closed off the roads, the rails, the canals. Why that's happened doesn't concern us. The results do. Just imagine a city the size of Philadelphia, cut off from fuel, food, and everything it takes to make a city run. That's Berlin. That's where the Air Force comes in. We're going to feed Berlin by air. Pursuant to orders, the 19th Troops Carrier Squadron will proceed to Chickabee Falls, Massachusetts. And from there... The date? You know it. April 1948. And the planes came. Nice, fat C-54s. Their empty bellies ready to be filled with coal and flour and milk and oil. They came from everywhere. Aircraft 2589 to Rhine Main Tower. Request landing instructions. Over. Rhine Main Tower to Aircraft 2589. Who are you? Where are you from? Over. Where are we from? We're from the 19th from Hickam, Hawaii. Well, hush my ukulele. Maintain your altitude and you move in after the 54th from Alaska and the 20th from Puerto Rico. Anybody from Tibet or Afghanistan follows you. Aircraft 2589 QSY to Frankfurt Airways on 13788 megacycles for landing instructions. Over. Roger and out. Danny. Huh? You call me, Captain Gravy? Come on, come on. Kiss the Sandman. Bye-bye. Ugh. What a dream. That's one thing the Air Force can't take away from an engineer. His dreams. Oh, you're breaking my heart, McCullough. Go on back and wake him up. 
We'll make Rhine Main in a few minutes. Yeah, oh. Pretty classy German, huh? Right out of Schopenhauer. All right, rise and shine. Take a look at Germany, home of Rhine wines, fine beer, and assorted strudel. You awake, Hank? I'm awake. Boy, look at that rubble. This place sure caught it. <laughs> Not enough. This is where they should have used the A-bomb. Still with the big chip. Huh? I didn't ask for Germany. You got it. We all got it. Get used to it. Why me? Let the Krauts get used to starving for a while. Staff Sergeant Hank Kowalski, still fighting the war. I still got a war to fight. You can't get that prison camp out of your system, can you? Leave me alone, Danny. I own it. Leave me alone. They want to feed the Krauts? Okay. They send me over here? Okay. But I don't have to like it. Some crummy barracks this is. And believe me, Danny boy, this is the best part of Germany. Well, at least we'll get some sleep. All right, you men, keep it down. Huh? All you flight engineers of the 19th report to your planes immediately. Don't blame me. I don't draw up these orders. You'll be taking a load to Berlin inside of an hour. Start moving. Welcome to Germany, Danny, and wake me up when you get back. Staff Sergeant Henry Kowalski here. Yeah. You're going too, Sergeant. I'm no flight engineer, sir. I'm GCA. Yeah, you're down for Berlin. Berlin? Wait till you see Tempelhof Field on a foggy day. You'll know why we need GCA operators just to bring them in. Just catch a ride on any plane, Sergeant. Yeah. The cesspool ain't bad enough. I gotta fall right into the middle of it. Berlin yet. <laughs> Just stand right there, Hank. Watch me push the buttons. You'll be fascinated. I'm thrilled all to pieces. Say, uh, Captain Grammy, how's it feel to be flying co-pilot? Yeah, if Major Bedford wasn't along, I'd probably be in Sweden by now. I guess it's a milk run after you get used to it, huh, Major? Oh, sure, sure. All you do is stay in a 20-mile corridor, fly at exactly 170 miles an hour, hold exactly 6,000 feet, fly instruments continuously, and give radio checks on the second. Nothing to it. Uh, what kind of a field is this Templehof? See for yourself. There it is. What the? Oh, no. You must be kidding. Hey, what are they trying to do? Hide it behind those apartment houses? Mm, With your gear down, you can almost roll your wheels on those roofs. Ah, don't kid yourself. When you land at Tempelhof, those roofs are five stories above you. And below, just for convenience, there's a graveyard. When the fog hits, letting down between those apartments is like threading a needle when your mouth is too dry to spit. Well, what's the matter, boys? You're not talking. Who can talk? <laughs> Landing checklist, Captain. Heater switch is off. Heater switch is off. Booster pumps high. Booster pumps high. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Berlin. I gotta draw Berlin. This is it, Temple Hall. <laughs> Guess you guys can use GCA all right with 200 feet ceiling and a quarter of a mile to make a landing. GCA, Sergeant, and a lot of things that haven't been invented yet. Now, let's get out of here. Hey, what about unloading all this stuff? Trucks get it as soon as we land. <clears throat> Mostly Germans do the work. I'll go check the weather. Yeah, give these crowds a chance and I'll uh, steal your blind. Well, they're doing a good job. Hey, look, Hank, they're just people. Don't kid yourself. They're a special brand of people. They're the super boys. So what are you trying to do, start another war? I ain't finished with the last one yet. Uh, Major, uh, thanks for the lift, sir. Where's operations? Over there, Kowalski, last building on the right. I guess I'll check in. I'll look for your next trip, Hank. If I'm sleeping, just leave your card. So long, Danny. Oh, Major, all right if I leave the field for a while? I'd like to take a look at Berlin. No, I'm sorry, Sergeant, it's not allowed. You mean we just stand around while we're here? Well, the turnaround is just 20 minutes, McCullough. 20 mi- Some command this is. <laughs> I wouldn't worry, Sarge. You wait till three or four months go by, and you'll really learn to hate it. Three or four months? <laughs> No time for coffee this trip, Danny. 
We're trying to lop three minutes off the turnaround. Oh, have a heart. I've been up and down so many times this week, I feel like a yo-yo. Templehof, Danny. Templehof, Ryan Maine. Templehof, Ryan Maine. Tem- I'm living in a rut at 6,000 feet. Captain Granny, I'd better have a look at number four when we get home again. Four months and already he calls it home. Hey, get a load of this. Yeah, looks like the honor got out there. Wonder who they're putting on the show for. Who knows? Where's the truck? Oh, probably holding it up until after the shindig. Hey, look, Captain. They're coming this way. Yeah, must be some big grass around. I don't see any. Oh, Danny. Huh? I think... I think it's for us. Well, what are you looking at me for? I didn't do nothing. The crew of this plane out and follow me. Watch the pitch. Big show. You're the 100,000 airlift flight into Berlin. (laughs) Oh, go on, Captain. They want you. They need you. You too, Sergeant. Huh? Me? Well, since when are they bother with engineers? Since now. Oh, brother. Bahad! Haste! Bahad! Haste! case will be made to the flight engineer Daniel McCullough from St. Paul, Minnesota, by Frau Frederica Burkhardt. Oh, Sergeant, look who you drew. Genuine 21 jewel movement. Heaven protects the poor enlisted man. Sergeant McCullough, I offer you this simple gift from all the women of Berlin, from the wives and mothers and those who are alone. We have watched your planes bring us food and cold and medicines and serums, and now there have been a hundred thousand such flights. This briefcase, Sergeant, is filled with the gratitude and admiration of hundreds of thousands of women. Please, take it. Hey, how about a kiss for a picture, huh? Uh, Mark me the cushion, huh? Of course. Mmm. Mmm. Hey, you guys want another picture? (laughs) No, that's fine. All right, men, back to work. Come on, brother. Well... Goodbye, Sergeant. Uh, your name is Frau Bergheim? Yeah. Uh, your, uh, your husband... My husband was killed during the war. Oh, well, I'm sorry, I... It seems long ago. Well, perhaps we meet again. Ah, uh, no. Not a chance. They won't let me into Berlin. Oh, that is too bad. But just in case, in America, we have a phrase for situations like this. Phrase? What is it? What's your phone number, honey? <laughs> There is a phone for the apartment where I live. Wait a minute, I'll write it down. Seven five, four five, three two. Come on, Sergeant, let's go. Come on, Captain. Uh, maybe I'll get to look you up, huh? Goodbye, Sergeant. Goodbye. Uh... Oh, Sergeant McCullough. Uh, before you get away, I'm Vic O'Malley, United Press. Just heard you're from St. Paul. Oh, yeah, yeah. Anything I can do for you? Uh, yeah. You see, we service the St. Paul Dispatch, and they've been after me for one of those hometown boy flies lift stories. How about it? Oh, no, not me. What What you want is a glamorous pilot. Ah, uh, who can be choosy? Besides, I want a different angle on this story. No, no, no thanks. I appreciate it, Mr. O'Malley, but I... Oh, come on. It'll only take a few hours of your time. I, I want to follow you from Rhine, Maine with a load of flour. You know, pictures showing how the flour becomes bread in the Berlin bakery, that sort of stuff. Me? Shit, you. In Berlin? Berlin. Get me a 24-hour pass? Sure. You know, Mr. O'Malley, I feel it's my duty to let the folks back home know what's going on here. <laughs> That's great. Then I can count on you. You and Frau Burkhardt both. For Pete's sake, Sarge, will you get a move on? My captain calls. See you, Mr. O'Malley. See ya. Hey, hey, Danny. You're a hero. Hiya, Hank. How's the GCA business? Oh, just then. You keep this up, you might even get the Kraut Iron Cross. Tell me about it when I get back to Berlin. With a pass yet. A pass? <laughs> it's your laughing, boy. I'm going to show you how to live with these people. Sergeant McCullough! So long, Kowalski. Sir. Don't take any wooden blips on your radar screen. Keep your shirt on, sir.
Our story will continue in just a moment. But now, if you suffer from pains of headaches, neuritis, or neuralgia, you should discover what many thousands have known for years, that Anison brings incredibly fast, effective relief. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Probably at some time you have received an envelope containing Anison tablets from your physician or dentist. Thousands of people have been introduced to Anison this way. Try Anison yourself the next time you suffer from the pains of a headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. You'll be delighted at how quickly relief can come. Anison is spelled A N A C I N. Your druggist has Anison in handy boxes of 12 and 30 tablets and economical family size bottles of 50 and 100 for your medicine cabinet. Ask for Anison today. <laughs> Now for the second act of the Screen Director's Playhouse presentation of The Big Lift, starring Edmund O'Brien as Danny and Paul Douglas as Hank. See, Mr. O'Malley, it's all a matter of pulling the right switch at the right time. Uh-huh. How about this one, Sergeant? Here, you pull that and the wings fall off. <laughs> Never mind him. He's just a pilot. The captain's jealous because he ain't getting his name in the paper. I'm jealous of that 24-hour pass you've got. Uh, tell me, doesn't this fog bother you guys? Nope. As long as you can see the wingtips, it's a clear day. I'm glad to hear it. Where are we? Coming into Templehof. Well, how do you know? Radio. GCA will be picking us up any minute now. GCA? Ground-controlled approach, radar and stuff. Maybe we don't know where we are, but they know on the ground. They just talk us down. GCA, coming in now, Sarge. Sounds like your friend, Hank Kowalski. Here, yeah, Mr. O'Malley, take a listen on the headphones. This guy's the best in the business. You're now over building area, going high on glide path, adjust your rate of descent. Glide path improving, quarter mile from touchdown, on course, on glide path. Now you're drifting, correct course, three degrees right. Two degrees. Very nice correction. Now start breaking your glide. Take over visually now and complete your landing. Jigsaw over and out. Holy Ike, we're right in the clear. Landed. Pretty sharp, huh? Yeah, you said it. Look, I got to do a story on this thing. I'll fix it. Uh, will your friend mind? Sure. Like a father minds talking about twins. <laughs> It's a pleasure to help the press. You know what radar is, Mr. Malley? Yeah, roughly. Very roughly. Okay, you keep your eyes and ears open, too, Danny. You might learn something. Now, this here GCA shack is just a radar center. We send out a radio signal that bounces off the plane. When the signal comes back, we turn it into a spot of light or a blip. See, it shows up here on the screen. Uh -huh. Looks like a television set, Sergeant. The same principle. Now, depending on where the blip is, we know just where the plane is. Maybe the pilot don't even know, but we know, so we just talk them down. I see. And the pilots, they have confidence in you? In this weather, mister... They gotta have. Uh, I hate to break up the lecture, but I've only got a 24-hour pass. Oh, yeah, and... yeah, I know, Sergeant, sure. Well, thanks very much for the talk. We have to start following that flower around. You want to come with us, Hank? I ain't interested in seeing a bunch of crowds being fed. You know, the Jerry's wanted to sign a separate armistice with my pal here, but he's holding out for a castle on the Rhine. Ah, guy like you. You don't know nothing. I know a Schatzi in Berlin, that's something. A Schatzi? Hey, well, well, look, Junior, you're liable to get in trouble running around by yourself. Uh, I'll go along for the ride. Okay, Sarge, is the last shot. With a loaf of bread in his arms yet, standing in front of a bakery. Danny McCullough, the spirit of Berlin. Nuts. 
That's got it. Thanks a million, Sergeant. A pleasure, believe me. I want to get the story, I'll send it to you. Do that. Well, enjoy your pass. So long. So, yeah, see you. See you, so long. Boy, they'll love me in St. Paul. Yeah. Come on, I, I want a quick phone booth and a frow named Frederica. There's a phone booth at the corner. Hey, uh, there's some place I can take her to dinner, Hank. There's nothing around here. There's a spot in the British zone, ain't bad, the Saverin. Saverin, got it. Hey, look, maybe we can make an evening of it. I'll pick up my Shotzi, too. Oh, oh Hank, you've got a Shotzi? Oh, well, after four months, what do you expect? Well, you're a trader. Ah, uh, don't give me that trader business. With Gertie, it's just like I want it. If I want to see her, I see her. If I want to talk to her, she talks. And if I don't want to, she keeps her mouth shut. She must be nuts about you. I should worry. She gives me one day's service on my laundry. The PX takes a week. Here's the phone booth. Well, you call and I'll get us a taxi. Okay, only takes a second. Taxi! Hey, Fritz! Well, bring it here, Buster. Bring it here. That's it. If I wanted ten feet away, I'd ask for it ten feet away. That's more like it. Peter? Yeah, sure, Peter. What's the matter, Vienna Schnitzel? You think I'm going to take a punch at you? Please, no English. Ain't that a shame, no English. Well, I learned my German a hard way, and you... Hey, I get hey, a... Hank. Yeah? She's not home. The guy who answered said she is Boikingberis Barbarossa Strassi 32. Oh, well, that's on the way back to the field. I'll, I'll drop you. Come on, get in. Hank, this can't be the place. There's nothing but rubble. This is the place. That's a work gang clearing a mess away. But. But they're women. Women working like this? So if we lost the war, your sister'd be doing it. Take your choice. I don't like... Hey. Hey, there she is. Yeah, there she is. Don't she look glamorous in them overalls? <laughs> well, uh, happy fraternization. Hello. Just remember me? Oh, Sergeant McCullough. Well, what do you know? So, you did get to Berlin. For about 24 hours... You, you look fine. No. No, I look like a woman who works with freaks. Well, in Berlin, if you are between 18 and 55, you must work. You speak English very well. You could be a translator or something. No jobs, but thank you. Now I practice my English with you, maybe, yeah? Yeah, <laughs> but definitely, yeah. Uh... Uh, most times I practice only in letters to America. Oh, relatives, friends? A friend in St. Louis. Well, I'm a friend from St. Paul. Frau Burkhardt, will you have dinner with me tonight? Dinner? Yeah, thank you. I'll be through in 20 minutes. Then we go and I change my clothes. You will wait, Sergeant? The Sergeant will wait. I'll just sit down here in this packing case. Here you see Berlin, as it really is. A ruin. Yeah! Oh, Sergeant, you're hurt. A bullet. Oh, oh. oh. Just, just help me out of this wet cement, will you? Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's a... Fine place to put a wheelbarrow. I should not have let you sit down on that old packing ah, case. That's my own stupid fault. Look at my uniform. <laughs> you look so nice and fresh. <laughs> you know, you know, if this stuff hardens, you're going to have one more statue in Berlin. <laughs> yeah, in memory of the airlift. Don't worry, Sergeant. There's the tailor shop downstairs from where I live. Oh, this is a fine way to start a leave. Look at that. I personally will make it up to you. Yeah? Well, all right. So, you look very nice in Herr Stieber's bathrobe. I'll have to thank him for it. He has a room next door. He will be glad to talk to you. Duck? You know, if you lived any closer to Temple Hop, they'd be landing planes on your kitchen table. <laughs> Here is where the airlift planes make their... Uh, what is the expression, landing approach? You know, walking to your place, looking at the shops, they're almost empty. You wouldn't know there was any airlift at all. Ask the people of Berlin. They know they are grateful. Ah, uh, people are people. War's over. Yeah, the war is over. Well, I go down and get your uniform now. If you want company, Herr Stieper's room is through that door. I'll be right back, Sergeant. Hello. Oh, 
the American sergeant. I'm Steva. Danny McCullough. I wanted to thank you for the use of your robe. Oh, it's a pleasure. You'll pardon me for not leaving the window, but, uh, yeah, that's another one. I have to mark it down. Uh, pardon me, but what are you doing? Oh, it's very simple. I'm a Russian spy. What? <laughs> Surprise? Don't worry. The Americans know that I do this. But, but why? Well, you see, I count the airlift planes. Each time a C-54 comes, I mark it down. And every three hours, I phone the Russians. Oh, Steve, that's crazy. They can read the official airlift figures in the paper. Oh, but those Russians don't believe official papers. So, you see, I make a check. Well, what happens when your count agrees with the official figures? Oh, that would make the Russians very unhappy. So every day, I knock off a few planes here and a few planes there. And the Americans know about this? Oh, sure, once they fix the phone for me. Oh, some system. Hey, uh, do the Russians have many spies? Mm, 15,000, maybe. Oh, that's great. Why don't the American authorities do something about it? Oh, they do, Sergeant. You see, they have spies, too. Not so many, just about 10,000. 10,000? 10, <laughs> you mean to say there's 25,000 spies spying on each other? <laughs> well, you see, it would be quite a mess if it weren't for one thing. What's that? There are maybe 500 spies who work for both sides. That way, everybody knows what everybody else is doing. Sergeant, oh. Good talk here, Steve. Good talk. Sergeant, I forgot. The electricity... Hey, hey, wait a minute now. Calm oh. down. Catch your breath. But your uniform. What about my uniform? I forgot I told you about the electricity. <laughs> Today, there is no current in this part of the American zone. Most of the generators are in the Russian zone. Look, and just no... tell me one thing. Where is my uniform? The tailor. He took it to a friend in the British zone to use his equipment. Oh, fine, fine. We're supposed to meet a buddy of mine for dinner. Well, you still go... Like this? In a bathrobe? Oh, well, uh, I have clothes, Sergeant. Not so nice, maybe, but you're welcome. Oh, no, no, sir. If I'm caught out of uniform, I've had it. You would look very German. Nobody would know. And this was going to be such a nice 24 hours. Well, there goes another one, Herceba. Oh, forget it. That one was American propaganda. What a city. Well, I said I wanted to see Berlin, so I might as well see it as a civilian. Herceba, let's have those clothes. <laughs> And now, before the curtain rises on the next act, don't forget that the new 1951 Buick will be shown for the first time anywhere this Saturday, January 20th. Don't miss this gala opening day at your nearest Buick dealers. That's the day the entire all-star lineup of 1951 Buicks will be introduced. And you are personally invited to be among the first to see them. See the car of your dreams and everyone's dreams with its new features, new smartness, New and distinctive Buick lines. And what else has the new 51 Buick got that sets the pace again? Plenty. Check this new honey for its power, its looks, its price. And you'll see why the 51 Buick is the smart car, the smart performer, the smart buy for 51. Remember the date, this Saturday, January 20th. And the place, your nearest Buick dealers. Don't miss seeing the new 1951 Buick. You are listening to the Screen Director's Playhouse, the Thursday night feature on NBC's All-Star Festival. Brought to you by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television... The makers of Anison for fast relief from the pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia, and by your local Buick dealer, who introduces the new 1951 Buick this coming Saturday, January 20th. Don't miss seeing the new 51 Buick. The Screen Director's Playhouse presentation of The Big Lift, starring Edmund O'Brien and Paul Douglas, will continue after a short pause for station identification.
This is the Screen Director's Playhouse. We continue with the third act of The Big Lift, starring Paul Douglas as Hank and Edmund O'Brien as Danny. Your friend usually late for dinner engagements, Sergeant? He's probably sitting up with a sick radar screen. And uh, my name isn't Sergeant. It's Danny. But I can't very well call you that. In Germany, these things take time. You saw me in a bathrobe. You can call me Danny. <laughs> of course, that does make a difference. All right, Danny. And you're Frederica. Frederica? No. Better make it Freddy. This is a girl's name in America? Oh, sure. Half the girls in America named Freddie. The rest are named George. Hey, here comes my buddy. Wait till he sees me in his civilian get-up. Guten Tag, Herr Kowalski. What? Well, if it ain't Fritz. In the flesh. You sure went native in a hurry. It's a big deal. A tailor ran away with my uniform. Frau Burkhardt, Sergeant Kowalski. How do you do, Sergeant? Yeah. Where's your girl? Gertie, here she comes now. Some cabbage head. I'll say this for she irons a good shirt. Hey, stupid! Here. This is Danny and Frau Burkhardt. Meet Gertie. My name is Gerda. Gertie's good enough. Sit down. If you are Gerda, then I am Frederica. When we are with the Americans, what happens to our men? She does as I say. That's all the manner she needs. Hank, please. Take it easy, boy. Uh, hey, you, Frederica. Danny tells me her husband was killed in the war. Yeah? What was he? SS? Hank, cut it out. Just a question. No. My husband was drafted. Oh, sure. Not a volunteer in the whole German army. And if you like to know about my father and mother, I'd tell you that. Too. Never mind him, Freddy. He's a bug on the subject. No, I don't mind at all, Danny. My mother was killed in an air raid. My father went much earlier. He was a professor at the University of Berlin. When they burned the books, he spoke against the government. I don't see him since. Frederica, your father must have been a very brave man to do what he did. Not brave. He just believed strongly. My father believed, too, in the wrong things. Your father was a louse. Papa can be the biggest jerk in the world, but in Germany, what he says goes. He tells you when to talk, think, die. Then along comes another jerk like Hitler, and he becomes the papa even for the papas. You're a great guy to be sounding off. What's the matter with you? Are you big ape? You're treating Gerda the same way. You tell her what to do, what to say, what to hey, think. Hey, wait what... a minute, wait a minute. Hey, you know something? You're right. Yeah. Well, when I'm wrong, I admit it. Well, admit it to Gerda. Bravo, Danny. Well, Gertie, uh, from now on, you can disagree with me. Out loud? Well, it better not be too loud. And I can ask questions? Sure. Good. I'm so mixed up. You are American. Danny is American. Today, there is much America in Germany. So I want to know about America. <laughs> okay. Shoot. What is democracy? Well, it's... Why, uh... What is it? Well... Okay, answer it, Hank. Well, democracy is democracy. What kind of a stupid question is that? This... Look, you two talk politics. Freddie and I are going to dance. Uh, I hope. Of course. Well, now, look, let's, let's start with the voting, huh? Yeah. I don't think I like him, your friend. Hank? He's all right. In a way, you can't blame him much for his hate campaign. He was in a prisoner of war camp, German. They must have given him a rough time. All that. Can't we forget it, Danny? Sure. I I don't want to be personal, but you mentioned a friend in St. Louis? Oh, yeah. A man? Yeah, a man. Oh. Is there anything... <laughs> No, then. He's a family friend. There is nothing. Oh, then there's a clear track, huh? Clear track? An American expression meaning it looks like a long, beautiful night. Oh, yeah, then. I'm sure it will be a clear track. So, America, Hank, it is run by the people. Right. A people's government. Right. Like in Russia. Wrong. What you said? Okay, okay, what I said. Now, look, call it a people's government in Russia. But the point is, who is boss? The people or the government? Now, if you... 
Something wrong, Hank? I, I think I just saw an old friend. Who? That guy, just leaving. You know him? That German? Yeah, I know him. I know him all right. Gertie, just sit here. I'll be oh. back in a few minutes. Hey, pal. Yeah? Out for a nice, lonely walk, huh? I do not understand. Yeah, me too. Just a walk. Please, I must go. I... No, no, no. You know, it's funny meeting us like this. You know, you're the spitting image of a guy I used to know during the war. He was a guard in a prison camp. No, guard. Never. You you make, make mistakes. What's the matter? Relax. Take it easy. I'm just holding on to you because I like you. Yeah. I want to talk to you. Yeah, yeah. I want to tell you about this guy. Oh, he was quite a German. Yeah. He hated Americans and he hated Poles and I was both. So he took it out on me. You know what he used to do? He'd take me aside in the woods and give me German lessons. Nothing easy like Gutentag or Auf Wiedersehen, but nice little tongue twisters like the Potsdamer Postkutcher puts the in Potsdamer Postkutsch Kasten. Well, I made mistakes, lots of mistakes. Yeah, yeah. And whenever I did, this fella, he'd correct me with a rifle butt in the kidneys. It took me about seven months, but I learned German. Of course, I've forgotten some of it, but if the weather changes suddenly or I bend too quick, you'd be surprised how it all comes back to me. Nine, nine, it, it wasn't me. Come not here, me, not come me. here. You got a little English lesson coming to you. Now, Germans have trouble with the W's, don't they? I'll give you an easy one. Just say it after me. <laughs> Which way went the wing at Whippoorwill? I don't want to hear any V's instead of W's in there, or I'll have to correct you. Now, try it. Which way went the winged Whippoorwill? Now, say it. Uh, which way? Ah! Which way, I said. Now, try it again. Which way? Again! 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 him out. The police, Danny. I'm a dead duck if I'm picked up in these clothes. We'll have to run. But, Hank. G Gerda will take care of him. Hurry. <laughs> now you're, you're one of us, Danny. You know what it means to run, to hide, to be a German. <laughs> Come on in, Hank. You okay? Yeah. He can't. Swollen. Freddy's out for a while. Uh, this is her Steve, my friends, Hank and Gerda. How are you? How do you do? Good enough. Well, I leave you alone. Hank, what was the fight all about? What happened? I knew that guy once. In a prison camp. Oh. For seven years, Danny. For seven years, I've been waiting to beat that face in. So now I've done it. Why do I feel like this? So lousy, so dirty and rotten. Hank, it is better than feeling good. Hank, get. They're all right, Freddy. Uh, what about the uniform? Oh, tonight there was no electricity in the British zone. What? Oh, early tomorrow you get it for certain. Well, what am I going to do tonight? I will sleep with a woman down the hall. You can have my room. Well, I... Please. Come on, Gertie. Let's all get some sleep. Good night, Frederica. Good night. Good night, Danny. Good night. Good night, Danny. Okay, okay, good night. That's enough already. See you at the base in the morning, Danny. Yeah, see you. So, Danny, it has not been what you expected, your leave? No. Not what I expected at all. I am sorry. Don't be. I... We've gotten to know each other pretty well, Freddy. That's... That's very important. Is it, Danny? Yeah. Yeah, it certainly is. The way you look at me, I think, Danny, you love me just a little. More than a little, Freddy. More. <laughs> Can't you wait a minute? Next trip, Hank. I gotta see Freddy. Well, uh, come here. That's what I want to talk to you about. Huh? 
Well, for a week now, I've been delivering your coffee and stockings and blouses and cigarettes for you. Yeah, so? So, so I called you a sucker and I was right. I had a friend in the document center look her up. Frau Frederica Burkhardt. Yeah, look at that. What'd I tell you? That husband of Freddy's was in the SS. Yeah. Well, it's real pretty, isn't it? Yeah, it gets prettier. A wonderful father never saw a university. Had a little dough and he wanted to keep it, so he played ball with the boys. He walked out on a mother in 1939 because she happened to be Polish. Nice guy. I guess it's true. It must be true. Yeah. All of it. There are many other things I lied about. But, but, Freddie, why? Because I have to survive. Look around you, Danny. Bricks, wreckage, our lives. It's all this reason enough for a lie, to escape from it for even a moment now and then. I think, Freddy, I think if I were you, I'd, I'd lie and cheat and steal anything to... Oh, you poor kid. Pity, Danny? I love you. But more important, I... I understand you. Freddy, Freddy, for days I... I've had something buzzing around in my head, and, and now I know it's right. It has to be. Danny, what is this? Will you marry me? That's all. Will you marry me, Freddy? Why, you big lug-headed sap. Look, I don't have to ask your permission to get married. Just take this envelope to Freddie and have her sign the paper. You can't get married now. Why not? Airlift personnel has been here six months ago on stateside. I'll see the CO. There must be some way to hurry things up. Yeah, she must have really fed you a line. Now, look, there was no line. Nothing nothing cheap or nasty. Why, why she's got she's got dignity and, and fineness. And, and, brother, she's really had it. And so have a lot of other people in this town. Well, I never realized how yeah, tough... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel so sorry for him. Every Sunday at 4 o'clock, I stand right here and bleed. Okay, Danny, I'll see she gets your letter. Gertie and me will take a walk by Freddy's place. Okay, I gotta get back to the plane. Well, run real fast. Maybe you'll break your leg. Imagine, Gertie. Just like that, he's going to get married. It is very nice. She will go to America and find out for herself about this democracy. Uh, you still harping on that. I don't see how it can work. Here, just in Western Europe, there are so many peoples, languages, customs. Uh, it would be impossible. Impossible, she says. Look, tell me, Dopey. You ever hear of Manhattan? Yes. It is in Brooklyn? It ain't in Brooklyn. It's an island, 12 miles long and 3 miles wide. In Manhattan, we got more Irish than there are in Dublin, more Jews than in Israel, more Germans than in Dusseldorf, more Italians than in Naples, and a half a million Poles besides French and Greek and all the others. And you know something, Gertie? They all get along all right. Maybe they don't all love each other, but at least they've learned to live together. Hey, ain't this where Frederica lives? This is it. And there's her neighbor, Herr Stieber. Well, let him give her the letter. I don't even want to talk to her. Hello, you're Danny's friend, yeah? Hi. Would you give this letter to Frau Burkhardt? It's from Danny. Oh, of course. I give it to her with this other letter I bring her from the post. Yeah, office. yeah, yeah. Just see that she gets it. Come on, Gertie. Now, look, you know what Manhattan is. You understand? John? Yeah, I've, I've brought your mail for Burkhardt. Uh, this is from America, St. Louis, and this is from Danny. Oh, thank you. Wait a minute, that's the wrong letter for Burkhardt. The other one, that's... Please, from... Herr Stieber. You don't read Danny's first? Please. You know that Danny's a remarkable oh. young fellow. He has a certain feeling. Oh, really, he doesn't even know me. Oh, yeah. And yet you know mm. what he did? He gave me these shoes from the mm. PX. Look at these wonderful shoes. Uh, what? Oh, I was reading. Uh, excuse me. Uh, Herr Stieber, you are going out again? Soon. I wonder you would mail this letter for me. I, I wanted to leave quickly, and I'm very busy. To St. Louis, of course? Yeah. 
You're so busy for a book. Is there something special? Yeah, I'm going to marry Danny. Oh, so you're going to marry Danny. Yes, Steve, I'm very anxious for my letter to be posted. Oh, of course, of course. I'll go right now. Hmm, to St. Louis. Hmm. Captain Gramey, don't you understand? Yeah, sure, sure. Look, I'm going home. I'm posted stateside for Saturday. I can't get out of it. Yeah, you ought to be celebrating, Sergeant. Celebrating? If I'm going to be married at all, I've got to be married today, tomorrow, or the next day at the latest. Go argue with the weather. We're fogged in at Ryan, Maine. Maybe for a week. Sergeant, right now you haven't got a prayer. Oh, yes, I have. Yes, I have, and I'm going to keep saying it over and over and over. You check today's weather? Tight. Not a break. Try tomorrow again, Sergeant. Captain Gramey, today's my last chance. I'm, I'm drafted out tonight. Well, the Met section says the fog might rise a little. Then maybe? Maybe? Yeah, Maybe. Sergeant, I don't know whether I'm making this flight for you or the Air Force. We'll name our first son after you, Graeme McCullough. <laughs> the poor kid. Don't count on too much, Danny. Flying in this soup is one thing. Landing is another. Yeah? Well, we'll soon find out. Yep, right now. This is Big Easy 3-7 calling Temple Hop Tower. Big Easy 3-7 seven to Temple Hop Tower. Over. Danny, grab those earphones. Yeah. Temple Hop Tower to Big Easy 3-7. Go ahead. Over. How's it for a landing? Over. Mighty thick. Let GCA bring it down. Have a look for yourself. Over. GCA, roger and out. This is Kowalski's ship, Captain. We'd just like him to crash us to keep me from getting married. Big Easy 3-7, this is Jigsaw. How do you read? Over. Jigsaw from Big Easy 3-7. Reading you 5x5. Five five. Over. Roger 3-7, understand 5x5. Five five. Give my love to Danny and do not acknowledge further instructions on this transmission. Maintain your present heading of 270. Start your descent. 800 feet, Danny. Maybe it'll thin out. Not much. 600 feet. See anything, Captain? Yeah, my wife and two kids. 400 feet. We're down a minimum. Blank. Dead white. Sorry, Danny, I'm no hero. We're going home. Tower from Big Easy 37. Failed to break through on approach. Clears for return to Rhine, Maine. Over. Roger. Over now. Thanks, Captain. You did your best. Don't worry, you'll work it out some way. Sure. With me posted stateside and Freddy and Jack. Fire signal. Number four engine. Look at that smoke. Feather four. Feather four. Pull the bottle. Got it. CO2 isn't working. Still burning. Of all the miserable luck. Captain, we'll have to go in now, won't we? Well, you don't have to be so happy about it. Temple Hoff Tower from Big Easy 37. Number four engine on fire. Pull fire bottle still burning. Request emergency clearance. Over. Big Easy 37 from Temple Hoff Tower. Jigsaw will contact you for emergency landing. Over. Big Easy 37, this is Jigsaw. Your present heading is 262. Correct to 270. Very good. Your course is good. Your altitude is 1,200. Your position, three miles from touchdown, begin descent. You're drifting slightly left. Nothing to worry about. Steer right to 273. You're now approaching on course perfectly. Your new heading is now 271. I can't see a lousy foot in front of my face. I got my eyes shut. One and one half miles from touchdown. On course. Going 50 feet low on glide path. Please correct 50 feet. Now. Very nice correction. You're doing fine. You're flying beautifully. Over building area. 10 feet too low on glide path. 10 feet too low. Please correct 10 feet. Good. Good. One eighth mile from touchdown. On the button. You will land in four seconds. What? Oh, that beautiful, lovely, wonderful.
beautiful boys. Captain, my first kid just got a middle name, Remy Kowalski McCullough. Open the door. Come on, open up. No. What do you mean, no? Open up, I said. Come on, now I just talked to Danny. We gotta go be witnesses at a funeral. Go away, Hag. Look, will you cut out the clown and come on, open up. Danny's going down to the consulate. We're all meeting at Freddy's. They're gonna get married. Now open up, Gertie. You big baboon. My name is Gerda. Are you drunk or something? No! I read a book. Finally, I know what democracy is. It is not you, a big, stupid jackass. One more crack like that, and I'll knock you from here to Potsdam. Stormtrooper! Stormtrooper? I go to the American military government. There I found books about democracy. Democracy is independence and decency. And freedom. And, and you are a big bully. Gertie, baby, now you got it. Now you know what democracy is. Overstuffed, big mouth. That's the idea, baby. Criticize the government. You, you, jerk. Ah, uh, Gertie. I mean, Gerda. Come on, baby, get your coat, will you? We're going to be late, baby. <laughs> Oh, uh, Steve. Oh, come on upstairs. It's going to be a wedding. <laughs> I guess you know, huh? Hey, yes, Freddie uh, and Danny, I. Danny, Danny, before you go up, uh, this letter. Huh? Yes, it's from Frau Burkhardt. She gave it to me, the mail. I, well, for certain reasons, I opened it. You'd better read it. Well, I, I don't know if, it, if it's Freddie's letter. Look, I... Danny, read it. In this way, I say thank you for the shoes, the airlift, for everything. And I'm very sorry. Very sorry. Addressed to St. Louis, Carl Mirbach. And so, my darling, it is sure now that I will be with you again someday. You must write and tell me how long I must stay with him until I can get a divorce. <laughs> I was worried. Yeah, some groom. You took your sweet time getting here. Oh, leave him alone, Hank. Is it arranged, Danny? When I will come to you in a month? No. I think it might be longer than that. Oh, no, Danny. And even longer still until you get to St. Louis. St. Louis? Here's your letter, Frederica, to your boyfriend. How did he get to the States, marry a whack? Hey, hey what's going on here? What, what is this? Yeah, read it yourself. Well, Danny... What do you want me to say? Nothing. Don't say anything. In a little while, I'm going home. I'll be glad. I'll be glad I'm back in the States and you're in Berlin. This is where you belong. In the rubble with the rest of the rats. Oh, Danny! Oh, please, please, wait. Leave me alone, girl. No, no. Don't judge people by a person, Danny. For what she did, there is no excuse. But to know how she could do it, you must look back. The lies. The cruelty. What do you want me to do? Justify her? No, Danny, no. But at least you must know we all are not Frederica's. You must not think that. No, Gerda. You aren't. I know that. But just let me go. I'll, I'll see you sometime in the States, maybe. No. No, I stay here in Germany. I want something different, Danny. Better. But... I, I try to find it here. It is my country. Sure. Make it good. Maybe you can. I hope so. So long, Gerda. There. Uh, there's your plane, Danny. 
We'll never get off in this fog. You got in, didn't you? They're up there, all right. Uh, some switch, huh? You and me, you hated them and I loved them. Okay, so maybe we're both wrong, huh? Gertie's okay. So is Steba. Must be plenty of others. You know, I suppose if you're ever going to sell these stoops a new way of living, you got to be a good salesman. You know, maybe if we don't shove them too hard... Sure, uh, sure. Uh, well, you don't want to talk about it. Have a good trip, Danny. Yeah. Hey, what about you? When are you going home? Oh, I forgot to tell you, I switched to permanent duty. You what? Well, I... <laughs> I, you know how it is. You know, they're getting in some new GCA equipment, and well, they want me to stick around and help kick the bugs out of it. So it's... you're going to grow old and gray on the airlift. Right? Ah, well, the Russians won't keep up the blockade forever. They can try. Let them. <laughs> Take a look. What good's a blockade if planes are up there when even the birds won't fly? Well, it's my trick in the GCA shack. Can you find your plane okay? I think so. So long, Hank. Go on, Danny. Don't get lost in the fog. I won't get lost. See you, Hank. Next Thursday, the screen director's playhouse promises two more magnificent performances as we present our adaptation of Alfred Hitchcock's thrilling motion picture experience, Spellbound. In the starring roles, you'll hear Joseph Cotton and Academy Award winner Mercedes McCambridge. Now, here are tonight's stars, Paul Douglas and Edmund O'Brien. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Thank you very much for your applause. But if you enjoyed the big lift, well... Well, the one to thank is the fellow who created the picture, and we mean created. Yes, sir, because as writer-director, he conceived the idea, wrote the original story and the screenplay, and then flew a crew over to Germany to put it all on film. So for Paul and me, it's, it's quite a pleasure now to introduce to you the wonderful guy who made the big lift. And if I can name a couple of other standouts, Eddie, there's Miracle on 34th Street and Apartment for Peggy. Ladies and gentlemen, the director... Mr. George Seaton. Thank you, Paul, Eddie. As long as we're throwing credit around, let's not forget those guys who did the flying in Germany. Yeah, and a lot of the acting in the picture, too, George. Yeah, what about that, George? How do you take a bunch of ordinary airmen, put them in front of the cameras, and make actors out of them? The answer to that one is easy. You can't do it. Flyers aren't actors, and they can't play characters. They can play themselves. The result? Performances that are real and honest. That's what we wanted in the picture. Well, you had an honest story to begin with, George. If we did, it's because it was written from observation on the scene. You saw it for yourself, Paul. The story of Hank and Danny and their adjustment is the story of an awful lot of people. Thanks, fellas, for telling it so well this evening. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. The Big Lift was presented through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox. With studio tonight, we salute for the great Hollywood premiere of Mudlark on January 30th. It's for the Irene Dunn special charity, the St. John's Hospital. Edmund O'Brien can currently be seen in the Paramount production, The Redhead and the Cowboy. Paul Douglas can soon be seen in the 20th Century Fox production, 14 Hours. George Seaton with William Pearlberg is currently producing the Paramount picture, Rhubarb. The nice cast included Betty Lou Gerson as Frederica, Doreen Tuttle as Gerda, and Henry Rowland, Eddie Marr, Tony Barrett, Paul Dubov, Byron Kane, and Ralph Moody. The Big Lift was adapted for radio by Richard Allen Simmons. The Screen Director's Playhouse is produced by Howard Wiley and directed by Bill Karn. This is Jimmy Wallington speaking and inviting you to listen next Thursday when we present Joseph Cotton and Mercedes de Cambridge in Spellbound with Screen Director Alfred Hitchcock. Sunday, Mr. and Mrs. Cary Grant start a new series as The Blandings on NBC.